What's up, guys? Here is my prediction for Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, a fight many people have been anticipating for a very long time, and it's finally here after being promoted for such a long time. Now, when we look at this fight, both of these boxers are huge. Wilder being 6'7", and Tyson Fury being 6'9". The weight is going to be a little bit different, though. Deontay Wilder weighing around 220, where Tyson Fury weighs around 260-ish. So even though they're almost the same height with almost the same reach, Tyson Fury is going to be a little bit bigger of a guy in there. It's going to play a factor, especially with the clinching exchanges, where Tyson Fury is going to utilize those clinches a lot, especially if Dan Wilder gets a little bit close. But I don't think it's going to be as much as like you saw in the Klitschko fight, because where you see Klitschko, he tries to enter behind the jab, look for his straight right hand, look for his uppercuts, and he likes to pressure forward, where Deontay Wilder likes to stay in the center and stay on outside boxing distance, where he's used to looking for that long straight right hand and the long left hook and jab. Tyson Fury just reacts to opponents. He doesn't really dictate the pace of the fight, but he reacts to you and lulls you into a game. Deontay Wilder is powerful. He's one of the hardest punchers in recent boxing history. His right hand is one of the most dynamic right hands I've ever seen. And it's the way he commits. It's the way he throws himself in behind the punch. It's the leverage he has. And he's so fast at throwing it. There's a lot of power generating through it. But the thing about Wilder is he doesn't have too many weapons. He's known as, quote unquote, a puncher. I don't really know what that means. I mean, they're both boxers. They both have some technique. People don't give Wilder enough credit about for his technique, especially his offense. Even defensively, people underrate him, right? He's good at judging distance at times. He does react a little bit too much when people close in behind the distance he's used to keeping. But when he's in his zone, when he's in his space, he's a hard guy to deal with because he knows how far to exit and he knows how far to enter for that right hand. Even against Luis Ortiz, the counter left hook on the inside was pretty shocking from him. A lot of people don't expect that from a guy like Wilder. Right, He fights at a very long distance. Everything is long, his stance is long, keeps his hands all the way out there, and extends fully with everything he throws. Now that's kind of a double-edged sword, because if he lands, he's knocking out people left and right. But if he doesn't land, he is so open to get countered. That is something you saw in the Luis Ortiz fight as well, when he got countered by the right hook. I believe when Ortiz slipped on the outside of the right hand, threw the right hook on the inside, and rocked Wilder. And that is what I mean about Wilder not having too many weapons. Wilder has a good straight right hand, he has a decent right hook, but it's slapping sometimes. And he has a decent jab, just keeping it out there, measuring for that right hand, and the left hook when he's closing in. But that's pretty much it. Fury is way more of a technical boxer. Right, He has every punch in the book. He can go either stance if he chooses to. He has, I believe, a faster jab. He's also good in close. Being as long as he is, with an 85 inch reach, 6 foot 9, he is actually pretty decent at the infighting game. And I believe in infighting, he will beat Wilder, which is crazy to think about. Wilder loves that distance, and when people close it on him, he reacts a little bit too much. And against a guy like Fury, who has the fight IQ that he does, and as fast as he is, it's going to be a bit of a problem for Wilder. And I believe the biggest thing that's going to factor into this fight in favor of Tyson Fury is his slipping ability. His slips aren't smooth, they aren't constant, they aren't flowy, but they're quick. When he's moving his head, everything is quick and it's calculated. It's not like he's moving just to move. He's moving either to feint, to fake some movement, to fake some shot, give you a look that he's going to use against you, or he's slipping on punches. It's hard to hit a guy like Tyson Fury. Looking at all of his fights, people really don't land on him that clean. Now, he hasn't fought too many big fighters like a guy like Wilder, but he did fight Klitschko as well. Klitschko had a very hard time landing anything on Tyson Fury. You can say vice versa with Deontay Wilder. He really hasn't fought anybody with the size of Fury. So, these two guys are really fighting a boxer they have never really faced before in their careers. In terms of size, in terms of technique, and all that sort of stuff. But I think a guy like Tyson Fury is more common in boxing at least the technical side, than a guy like Wilder. Wilder is his own unique guy. Boxers don't fight like Wilder does, for the most part. Even a guy like Luis Ortiz is a little bit similar like Tyson Fury in a way. The way he approaches the technical ability that he has. Wilder's quote-unquote punching ability is something Fury hasn't really seen before. But it is a lot easier to prepare for. And the slipping ability of Tyson Fury he only has to slip so many punches from Deontay Wilder. That right hand is the biggest weapon he's going to have to move out of. So if he can slip on the outside of the right hand, he can land the same right hook that Luis Ortiz did. Now if he's in the orthodox stance, he can land the straight right hand instead of the right hook. Or he can come on the outside with the left hook over the top or a left hook to the body, measure from there, and then keep his distance afterward. But it's going to have to be Wilder that's going to have to cover that distance. Because Fury's footwork is there, he's always going to be at his range. 
He's very quick on his feet, very quick to react, very quick with his head movement. Wilder is going to have to cover the distance and his entries to cover that distance are a bit repetitive at times. And I think it's something Tyson Fury can very well prepare for. So my prediction for this fight, I'm going to go with Tyson Fury. I think Wilder is going to miss a lot of his punches. Don't really bank on Wilder gassing out because his cardio seems pretty good. But if it goes to a decision, 100% Tyson Fury is going to win the fight. But Fury can catch Wilder a couple times. He's not known for his power. But if Wilder keeps leaving himself exposed by going for those lunging attacks and Fury keeps countering him, it's only going to add up. So I'm going to go with Tyson Fury. I'm going to go by a decision though. I think he's going to win 9 or 10 rounds out of the fight. So I hope you guys enjoyed the prediction. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. Leave your comments below who you guys think is going to win. I know there's a lot of split opinions about this. And a lot of people do think Deontay Wilder will catch Fury. We have to also note that Fury was out of the game for a few years before making his comeback about two fights ago. But in those two fights, I mean, he looked pretty decent with his movement. Although people said they look like sparring matches for the most part. But his movements are still there. His speed seems still there. Slipping ability seems still there. His jabs are still there. I mean, it doesn't look like he lost it too much. The motivation seems to be back for a guy like Wilder. So it's going to be interesting. There's a lot of X factors, especially with the return. But then again, he has been pretty active with those two fights. They've only been what? Not even with within nine months. Not even within eight months, I think. So my next video, I'm going to make a breakdown of this fight. So be on the lookout for that. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.